Hi everyone, Emily here. Today I am going to show you a detail of a painting of Claude Monet's Water Lilies. So I'm not going to be doing the whole picture. I want to show you the detail and the colours and the brush stroke of doing the Water Lilies. Just want to show you something first. I have been given, it was a long time ago, this beautiful book. It's a really big book and it's got to show you look how cool those water lilies are they're um I don't know if you can see the colors they've got blues and greens and all pinks and it's, it's absolutely amazing and here I thought this was so cool this is him in his garden love photographs old photographs they're so nice so this book I absolutely love this is a detail of his brush strokes so it's his, the way he paints so cool so I'm going to show you a little bit about how to do that so we did the water, if you're looking at these videos in sequence, we did the water lilies as a picture yesterday, which was that one. But we didn't use brush strokes per se. We are going to use them to do. So I've got my paint. So I've got any paint, any paint. You need red, yellow, blue, black, white. If you've got a brown cool, um, and I'm using acrylic paint but you could use any paint, it doesn't matter. And you want a pencil and a rubber, if possible, like an eraser, and your paper. Okay, so I wanna show you roughly, it's a water lily one that we did yesterday, it's beautiful. So let's look at the water lilies. So I'm gonna just draw a line, and you wanna kind of go down, and you just a wobbly line, and you're gonna kind of go like that. If you can't do it, we're going to do quite a few of them, so it's okay. You're going to do a line, and then you're going to just do a little curve, and then you're going to just like that. If you can't do that, it doesn't matter. You could just do this way, and just go like that. Big one could just be round like that, it's okay. Then you want to do the beautiful flower. I'm just going to try and find. Let's try and do the details of the beautiful flower. I'll put it up here just so you can see it. So we're going to do a little shape like that. If you can't do it, it's okay to do a shape like that. That's okay. And then we're going to just go out, 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 out. And you want to do that for all of them, really. If you can't do it like that, doesn't matter as long as it's a flower that you like so you could put more in there if you like and then what I quite like to do is just do a little edge to it you can't really see it there but we'll just draw a little edge to all of them it just looks like there's more they're not just flat they've got a little bit of an edge to them so we'll put that on there and then we're gonna do this is quite a large flower so a little lily pad don't want to do it too tricky because it might get confusing for you so just like just like that if you can't do that I'm trying to think how you could do it if you find that hard you could do a triangle then a triangle as in a sword you could do that if you like or just it's however you want to draw them on the water lily And the water lilies interlock, so they're very close to each other, the water lilies. Now, now we've done the water lilies, I want to show you how to do the painting of the water lilies. So get your paint ready, pause the video if you haven't got your paint ready, and you want to get a water pot and a brush. I've got like the, probably the worst brush that you could use, but I thought if I show you with a really bad brush, then it's good because you'll probably have a better brush than me. So what you want to do is think about, you want to do the background first, you want to do the water first. So you're going to dip it in the blue, okay, and you're just going to do this. You're going to touch the paper and you're going to go like that. And it feels like you're taking a while doing it, but it's okay. You've got the time probably. And then after you've done a few of the blue, just do a couple. 
you could dip it, don't rinse, don't put it in water, just get a bit of the green if you've got green, if you don't have green, dip it in the yellow and you're going to make a green as you go over. Can you see what I'm doing? I might do it slowly for you. So this is like a green colour because I've put it in the yellow. So blue and yellow makes green. So if I dip it back in the blue without rinsing, I'm still going to get a blue. It's okay. It's okay to have a dirty brush for this one. So I'm creating my brush strokes. So brush, stroke, 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 stroke. And it looks so cool. Like I really love it. I like to um, put a bit of white. So I haven't rinsed. I haven't done anything apart from keep picking up paint. So the more you use, so say like my brush is nearly dry now. So you're going to use it till your brush is dry, but you're not damaging your brush. So there we are. And then I'm like, oh, I need more paint. So what do I dip it in? Well, I'm going to dip it in the yellow. So the yellow can go there because it automatically makes a green. Do you know what? You won't want to use too much of the red, but you do want a little bit of red. So we could put a little bit of red there. Where you do the red, you want to put a bit of white because it can get a bit dark and sometimes it goes a bit brown, which is probably what mine's just gone and done. But how cool is it that all of them merge together, the colours? If you can't get rid of, if you can't get rid of the white gaps, I always like to dip my paint uh, paintbrush in the water after it's nearly dry. And then you just go over all of your water. So you've got water on your paintbrush. This is nearly dry and you're just going over. Because what you're doing is you're covering all the little gaps with the bits of wet that are left. Looks really cool. So we've done the water for now. I wouldn't mind doing a bit more actually. <laughs> I'm just going to do a little bit more. I just dipped it in the yellow. It's made another green, which is really nice. You could spend hours on the water. Uh, just because it's nice to do, it's relaxing. You could do any colours. You could do pinks and blues and oranges. Look amazing. In fact, I'm going to do red there. Bit of yellow. Bit of yellow. Okay. And it, although it looks strange because water's not necessarily that colour, if you think about in a river, everything reflects. Or in a pond, things reflect. I'm taking white now. I've got a bit of white. I'm going over it in blobs. So you can only really do this if you have paint. If you don't have paint, paint, you could do it with a watercolour pencil. Easily, easily watercolour pencil. Just doing a bit of blue there to make it merge in. Blue looks awesome actually, with the uh, white and the yellow. Ooh, I'm liking that. So you can see the difference. That's more wide brush strokes. That's and that one is quite small ones. So have a go at the water because it looks like it's moving. It's really nice. If it was one colour, all blue, it looks a bit like yeah, it's not as lovely. Now the water lilies itself. We're going to do a bit of white. So you're going to get your brush, dip it in the white. Dip it in the green. No, you probably might have green. Dip it in the white, dip it in the blue, dip it in the yellow. Now you'll find your paintbrush, your paint pot is getting really messy and that's okay. Now, you're going to do brush strokes. If you don't want to do brush strokes for the water lilies, you do not have to. But what happens is when you dip it into each one, so maybe like dip blue, white, yellow. What happens is you get on your brush different colours and it just looks so cool. So we'll do more yellow. So what you want is you want to make a nice greeny colour on the water lily. You don't want it the same as the water because then it's hard to see it, isn't it? So I'm just doing dark, almost like a dark green. Can you see how I'm painting it? 
I'm not doing it all the same green. I'm doing blobs. White's always your friend in the sense that you can do white blobs on top. It helps to make it different from the water. Now, for this one, I'm going to go with a different colour. I think I'm going to do like a light bluey one. So I'm going to dip it in the white, dip it in the blue. That's going to be like a really strange one. More white. So I want it to be really light. And what I'm doing is it's okay if they're not all the same colour. As in, I'm just going like that. I love painting like this. It's one of my favourite things. So just try it. Just give it a go. And then the other water lily. Dip it in the yellow. Dip it in the blue. I have a nice green one here. And as I say, you do not need to do brush strokes if you don't want to. You could just colour it in and then say, yep, I'm happy with that. This one, I love this colour. This one's going to be a greeny blue, but like a dark one. Okay. Fuck oh, off. Right. Okay. Now, probably can't can't tell the difference where that is so I'm going to do some more water just so you can see that that is water and my water's all a strange colour it's not the same as the water lily because if it's the same then it gets forgotten about and no one knows that it's supposed to be water so I'm blending that in with my dry brush oh, there we are right now my brush is quite large, but hopefully yours is quite small. You want to get a dark green. You're going to make a dark green. So do blue and yellow. Mix it in a separate pot. So I've got this kind of green. It's quite dark. So you want a lot of blue, a little bit of yellow. And you're just going just gonna to outline just the bottom. Don't outline all the way around. It's just here because it's you want to make them look like they're 3D. So just that. And if they're wobbly, that's great because it's a natural plant, isn't it? It's not man-made, so it's going to be wobbly. Wobbly. So you've got that. Right, and then you can let that dry or straight away go on to the water lily uh, flowers, which gonna take a brush just find in a brush I'm taking a clean brush because I don't have any water on on my table so take a different brush now we want the water lily flowers to be really striking and beautiful so I'm gonna get a white and a red so you want white and red on your brush and if it's too much start with a very light pink if you want but i'm going to do this i'm going to do like a little bit and i'm going to dip it in the red and the white again and i'm just doing half if they're really small i'll do the whole thing but i'm doing half of each petal and it can just be red if you like red or pink it's okay so we're just doing some of them are tiny it's hard to do half. And then if you do that, that's half of one, half of one, half of one, half of one. And if you've got that, just do, just do like the whole thing, be fine. Now the awesome thing about when you paint is it's nice to use white. So where's my water pot? It's quite dirty, my water pot. Okay. So white makes everything look really cool, it stands out. So dip it in your white after you've uh, rinsed your brush and you just wanna, you wanna go over all the areas that you've missed out. So you're doing this, you're going. Looks quite cool with the, with the red already on there. Woo, it's chunky monkey that one, <laughs> whoa. Then, no. and 
it's nice when they blend. So have a go, have a go, because it always is nice to try new things, isn't it? So there's like your water lily colours, but it'll be nice to put some yellow in there as well. So once you've done that, just do like a little blob of yellow. Mine's now gone quite green, my palette. <laughs> so yellow always makes it stand out, it looks really nice. And then what you could do is then start to do some brush strokes over it. So to make the water stand out, I've got white on my brush, but I haven't really rinsed it. So I'm going to end up with what looks like reflections in my water, which will look really nice. So I've got white on my brush. And I'm just going over. Well, it's not much white, is it? It keeps running out. Oh. I do like creating paintings that have brush strokes. So you could do this with anything. You could create a picture of a sky with lots of clouds and you could do that. Just gonna put some there. Now if you've got any black, black's always really nice to add here and there. You don't want to be using too much black because it can get a little bit overbearing. I'm just going to colour these in for you. Look at those green ones. Oh, I like them. They look like toothpaste. It's like a minty fresh toothpaste colour. Mm. I don't know why that's mmm. <laughs> Reminds me of mint chocolate. Right. Okay, so what you can do now is you can either rinse your brush, rinse the brush, Okay, rinse the brush, rinse the brush. And you can smudge the dry brush. I always rinse in the water and I always squeeze it out in the pot, in the water pot. Not sure if that's something you wanna do, but try it just for now if you want. Then I'm just gonna get the dry brush and blending in this line so it's not so, it doesn't look so unrealistic. It kind of looks more real. So just do that. If it doesn't look right to you, don't worry, it's fine. Doesn't matter if yours doesn't look like that. Now we want to do a tiny bit of black. So rinse your brush out. I've actually got this brush that, because I haven't used so long, it's actually bent in the water pot. So it just goes to show you it's not my favourite brush. So dip it in the black and you want to just, if you're scared to do this, maybe just don't. But if you can do it, a brush with a very, whew, very thin, tip that is what you need because what you're going to do is you're going to float so pretend do you know what i'll get you a piece of paper pretend that's your artwork you are going to touch and just do that you're not going to do this you're not going to flatten it all the way down because then you get a massively chunky line so you're not going to press hard, you're just going to press lightly. If you can't do this or you're not sure, don't do it. It's just if you want to add a bit of black here and there. Because it makes things stand out. And as I say, if you're a bit scared and you don't want to add it, you do not need to. You might want to do it when it's dry with a felt tip. A black felt tip if it's easier for you. So make sure it's dry your picture when you do it and then we could have a little bit of shadow there shadow there it's quite nice to practice doing a thin line so what i'm doing is i'm not pressing very hard at all i'm pressing like maybe can you see i'm pressing that much not that much goes my hand so I'm kind of doing this you see how cool the line is that it's really light and I'm going over my line so you can add that maybe get your parents to have a go because it's quite an adult thing to be able to hold the brush and fly over but you don't need to do it you could just not do this part but I quite like adding it it's quite a cool technique because it looks quite nice but then you could do some here and there, some black bits in the water. But you don't really need to do many. 
So that is the detail of my Claude Monet water lilies. You could take forever on it. You could go over it with different colours. You can blend more of the purpley water. You can do whatever you like. So please subscribe and share and see how you get on. And also please continue sending me your pictures because they just look amazing. I'll post them on Facebook. Okay, enjoy and let me know how you get on. Mwah.